What's up everybody? Today I will be showing you guys how to make an online multiplayer game in Unity, including a fully functional lobby where you can see all current rooms that players are in and join them. I already made an introduction video to multiplayer in Unity a couple of months ago, but here I will go over every step again so you don't have to watch both. We will be making a multiplayer game using the incredible systems of the Photon engine. Photon is used by tons of games including StumbleGuys and Among Us VR. Let's first create a server for our game. Go to photonengine.com and press sign in. Make an account if you don't have one already and log in. Once you're logged in, go to the top right corner and click on dashboard. Here you see all of your current apps. It will be empty if you don't have one already. Click on create a new app to make a new multiplayer server. Select multiplayer game and set Photon SDK to PAN. Give your app a name and go to call it multiplayer tutorial, but make sure you use the name of your game. You can also add a description and URL if you want, but I'll leave it blank for now. Then go to the bottom and press create. Your new app will now show up in your dashboard. Click on the app ID and copy it. Next we're going to connect Unity to our Photon app. Go to assetstore.unity.com and search for Photon Pun. You can select the free version, but there's also the premium version if you need it. Click on Add to my assets and then open it up in Unity. Once it's opened in Unity, you can install it and import the package into your project. Now paste the app ID that we copied earlier into this box that pops up and click on Set up project. Your game is now connected to the Photon server. I have this very simple scene with a TMP input field where the player can put their username and a connect button below it. Now let's create a new empty game object called connector then add a new c -sharp script with the same name and add it to the connector object. Let's open up the script and remove the start and update functions. Now import the photon.pan namespace in your script as well as the pro and change mono behavior to mono behavior pan callbacks. Now let's create two new variables, one for the username input field and one for the button text. So that will be the serialized field private tmp input field username input and serialized field private tmp text button text. If you're using the regular Unity UI instead of TextMesh Pro, then be sure to import using UnityEngine.UI and use input field and text instead of TMP. I add serialized fields before the private variables so we can access them in the inspector without having to make the variables public. Now let's create a function which will be called when the player presses the connect button. I'll create a public void connect to server. We'll first check if username input.text does not equal uh, empty. And then we'll set photonetwork.nickname equal to username input.text. We'll set button text equals connecting and photonetwork.connect using settings. This function will set the player's username to the username input and then start connecting to the server. But let's make a function that will be called automatically when a player is connected to the server. We'll create a public override void called unconnected to master and in there we'll say scene manager.load scene lobby. Be sure to now also import using Unity Engine management so we can actually switch scenes. This function needs to be named the exact same thing as mine because it's a photon function. It will now automatically be loaded into the lobby scene when we have a username filled in and then click on the connect button. To use this code, you need to make sure you have a scene called lobby and it needs to be added to scenes in build. Now let's go back into Unity. Drag and drop the input field and the button into the correct variable slots. Then go to the connect button and add a new onclick event. Then drag and drop the connector object into the slot and select the connect to server function. Now that the player is connected to the server, it's time to have them create rooms. I've set up this simple scene where on the left side you can see that you can create a room and on the right side all existing rooms will show up. I also have a room UI which is where all players in the room will be displayed as well as the name of the room you're in. We're gonna display the players in the next video. Now let's create a new empty game object called Lobby Manager. Then let's add a new c -sharp script to it, also called Lobby Manager, and open it up. But first remove the start and update function and import some libraries. We're going to need using photon.pan and photon.realtime as well as TM Pro. Now let's create a couple of variables. We're first going to need a serialized field private TMP input field called room input field and a serialized field private game object called lobby UI. We're then also going to need a serialized field private game object called room UI and a serialized field private TMP text room name. All right, next up we'll make the actual function to create a room and it will automatically be joined. First, let's create a private void start and we'll just say photonetwork.joinLobby. And then we're going to create a public void called create room. We're going to check if room input field.text does not equal empty. Then we're going to create a new room using photo network.create room. And the name will be room input field.text. Then we're going to create a public override void called unjoined room, which will be automatically called when we have joined room. And we'll set lobby ui.setActive equals to false and room ui.setActive true. Then we'll set room name.text equals room plus photo network.currentroom.name. Here we first check if the room name isn't empty and then we will create a room. 
the unjoined room function is automatically called when a room is joined, at which point we'll set the room UI to active and set its name to the room name. Now let's go back into Unity. Drag and drop the objects to their corresponding variable slots. Now let's go to the create room button and add a new on-click event and drag and drop the lobby manager object on there and select the create room function. Now let's show the existing rooms to the player so they can join them. First I'll go to the lobby UI and create a new scroll view object. Let's call the object current rooms and resize the scroll view so it fits the rooms object. Click on the current rooms object and disable the horizontal scroll option. Make sure to also delete the horizontal scroll from the game object in the hierarchy. I've created this room prefab which will be the object that will display an existing room. Now let's go to the content object under the scroll view object and add a new vertical layout group component. This will make sure that all room prefabs will be shown correctly without stacking on top of each other. I'll set child alignment to upper center and enable use child scale and disable child force expand. I'll also set spacing to something small like 5. If I now drag and drop one of the room prefabs under the content object, copy and paste it a couple of times, you can see that everything fits correctly. Now let's create a new c script called room prefab and drag and drop it onto the room prefab object. I'll once again delete the start and update functions and add the DMP pro namespace as well as a variable for the room name. Now let's create a function to set the name of the room prefab. I'll simply create a new public void called set room name, which will take in the argument, which will be a string called name to display. Then we'll set room name text equals name to display. Now let's go back to the lobby manager script. We now need to create some new variables which will be used to display all existing rooms. So I'll create a serialized field private room prefab called room prefab and a private list of type room prefab called room prefabs, so that's plural, and it will be equal to a new list of room prefabs. I know, it's a lot of room prefabs. Now let's create a new serialized field private transform called content object. Now let's create a function to display and update the rooms list. I'll create a new public override void called on room list update with as argument a list of room info which will be called room list and in there we'll set update room list with argument room list. Then I'll create a new private void update room list which once again takes in the argument a list uh, of type room, uh, room info which I'll call list and we'll gonna, then we're gonna loop through uh, each room prefab to destroy all current ones. To do this we'll simply do for each room prefab called room in room prefabs, gonna destroy room.game object, and then we're gonna clear the list by doing room prefabs.clear. Then we're gonna loop through the lists of the uh, new rooms, and we're gonna say for each room info called room in list, gonna create a new room prefab called new room, which will be equal to instantiate room prefab, and then the parrot will be content object. Then we're gonna say new room.set room name room.name, which is the function that we created earlier and finally we're going to add it to the list so we're going to do room prefabs add and then we're going to add the new room now let's go back into unity click on the lobby manager object and drag and drop the room prefab object into the room prefab slot as well as the content into the content object now go to the room prefab object and drag and drop the text object into the room name slot you can now test it out let's create a new build of the game and then open it up now let's give myself a username and connect to the server that works correctly you can see that I'm now in the lobby. Let's give my room a name and hit create room. And we will then automatically join the room. Now let's go back into Unity while the build is still running and go to the connect scene and do the same thing. You should see the room I just created in the lobby. And there you go, everything we've done so far has worked. However, we can join this room right now, so let's add that. To allow the player to join a room, we'll first need to go into the room prefab script and we're gonna first create a new private lobby manager variable called manager and then under the start function we're gonna say manager equals find object of type which uh, the type will be manager and then under the new public void called join we're gonna say manager.joinroom which is gonna have the room name the text as argument the join room function doesn't exist yet so let's make it go to the lobby manager script and we're gonna make a public void called join room with argument string room name. And then we're simply gonna say photo network join room with argument room name. When we have joined the room, the unjoin room function that we created earlier will automatically be called. And we will correctly join the room. Now let's go back into Unity and go to the room prefab object. Go to the button component and add an on click event. Drag and drop the room prefab script into it and select the join function. Alright, we're almost finished. The final thing we need to do is to create a way to leave a room once we've joined it. 
I've created this leave room button which will be used to leave a room. Now let's go back into the lobby manager script and create a new function to leave a room. I'll simply create a public void function called leave room and in there we'll say photonetwork.leave room. Then we'll create the public override void called on left room and we'll simply set lobby UI.set active true and room UI.set active false. Now let's go back into Unity. Go to the leave room button and add a on click event. Then drag and drop the lobby manager in there and select the leave room function. Everything should work correctly, however there are some bugs, so let's fix them. Right now there is a big issue when joining and leaving rooms because we leave the entire lobby instead of just room. This is very easy to fix however. We'll just add a new public override void called unconnected to master and we'll set photo network .join lobby. There's another issue where sometimes the update rooms list uh, function box out. To fix this, we'll simply add a serialized field private float called update interval, which I'll set default to something like 1.5. Then create a private float that called next update time. And then in the on rooms list update function, I'll check if time.time, .time, so the time in the game, is greater than or equal to next update time. Then we're gonna update room list with the room list argument like we did earlier then we're going to set next update time equals time to time plus update interval there you go you now have a fully functional multiplayer lobby in unity if you want to see how you can make sure you only move your player instead of everybody's players then i suggest you checking out my previous video on online multiplayer which i'll leave a link to in the description if you enjoyed this video then please leave a like and subscribe since this really helps me out i'm currently working on a 2d platformer game called frostbound that is pretty close to being finished so check out my devlogs on that if you're interested I'm also going to be making more multiplayer tutorials soon, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see those. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one.